Go. Hi, I'm Marco with Washmart.com. I'm going to go over two different types of unloader valves. I'm not going to go over a pressure regulator. That's a completely different subject. Oh, thanks for pulling that sticker off my shirt, Amber. Mm -hmm. So you have two major unloaders that we use. We use pressure actuated and flow actuated unloaders. I don't use flow actuated unloaders. I feel like they're trash, but a lot of people like to use them because there are some benefits to using them for certain types of jobs. Where I would like to use a flow actuated unloader, if you're pressure washing and you're doing a drop off, or if you're on a lift, high elevations, um, so it's reconnected. push, whenever you push down on the trigger with a flow actuated unloader, the pressure builds up because it reacts to flow rather than pressure. So the pressure will build up. So whenever you push down, it goes with a pressure actuated unloader. Whenever you push down the trigger, you get the jolting reaction. If you've ever been on a 65 foot JLG that's articulated and you use a pressure actuated unloader machine, you know exactly what I'm talking about where you push it and the entire basket shakes. I don't like that. That is going to be one of the only circum that is the only circumstance I would ever use a flow actuated unloader. These do fail more often. The reasons why they cost a lot more too. I they do. The reasons why they fail more often, I don't know. I just know that these do break more often. They are more sensitive, they are more finicky. Pressure actuated unloaders, although that one portion where you have the jolting reaction sucks, they are half the price generally. Uh, the other thing I like about these, these are easier to adjust. Some things that a lot of you don't know. Whenever you're checking to your pressure with a pressure gauge, with a pressure actuated unloader, you can adjust the unloader while you're holding down on the trigger gun and the pressure will climb the way that you're supposed to. With the flow actuated, how it works is you push down on the trigger, all right, I'm at 3,000 PSI. Then you tighten, then you push, and then you see what your new pressure is. You're not supposed to hold down on the trigger gun and adjust the unloader while you're holding down the trigger gun. That's a big difference whenever you're changing your pressure and adjusting your unloader. So that's something that a lot of people don't know and it's something that you should know. Why do you and Fred always use the VRT3 on everything? Because they're cheap, they work well, and they're cheap. They are the only unloader that's cheap that that, that isn't garbage. I mean, it, I like the VB. So it's cost effective and it will still perform yes. as well as other ones that cost more. The VB350 is absolutely a better unloader, um, but they are twice as expensive. Oh, what makes it better? So they last longer. Um, How much longer? It's kind of hard to say because I only use the VB350s on our 5Ks. Uh, it'll last about as long on a 5K as a VRT3 lasts with a 3K to kind of get It's just rated idea. for the 5,000 It's rated PSI. for 5,000 PSI. So, it, I've, so it's not a good unloader for everybody. It's a good unloader, the best unloader if you have a 5,000 It's just PSI. the longest lasting P, uh, unload. It's the longest lasting unloader that, that we've used. So if you use that on like the five and a half gallon per minute. It would last for a very long time. A very long time. I mean, it's going to last for So you would want to put that on your... I just use a VRT3. Okay. I, I, I just, I keep it simple. I do VRT3. The other reason why the VB350, I don't like the way it fits on those smaller pumps. Yeah, they're so, heavier. Yes, they are heavier. Uh, a lot of people like those green spring unloaders. I have not seen a difference in flow and pressure. And everybody says it's got the half inch inserts and it makes it to where your flow is higher. I'm not seeing a cleaning performance difference in the field. I I'm usually not... only sold those for two gun units is what they were designed for. Yes, but people claim that they make it to where you clean faster when you bucket test them. It's the same with the same PSI. So if the bucket tests the same, it doesn't clean faster. Um, Nathan said you look a lot long, younger with a haircut and no facial hair. It's that baby face. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> one last thing I want to cover about these the difference between these two unloader valves. And this is something that's really important for people to know. If you want to use a Siamese kit, you cannot use a flow actuated unloader. Mm -hmm. It will not work. You have to use a pressure actuated unloader if you want to Siamese two machines together. But what if you want to use the idle down feature on your EFI engine? 
So whenever we do the idle down feature on the EFI engine, I don't Siamese them. No, not Siamese, which unloader. Really? I thought the idle down feature was only the ZK1. No, that's if you don't have the idle down. If you're down doing the idle down, you have to use pressure actuated. If you're doing the idle down feature where you're attaching a pressure switch to your oh, pump. Raj said the green spring is rated for up to 26 and a half gallon per minute. It so is rated for the higher flow machines. Yes, but I also tell people, and I, I'm a firm advocate of this, anything higher than 10 GPM for the majority of what we do and what we do, it's just, just, just don't. Okay. <laughs> just don't. But yes. Now for hydro, Hydrovac companies that are using the RTX series pumps and the uh, and, 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 and the the ones that the Comet has, it's the H the HPC the HPP series, those you would want to use a green spring given that they're not going over four thousand PSI. So for your Hydrovac diggers that are using twenty six gallon, twenty one gallon per minute pressure washers, which is what's pretty common on those Vactor trucks you do want to use that green spring. In fact, lots of our Hydrovac companies use those green spring unloaders. What's the difference between the K7 and the ZK1? Uh, the K7 is heavier and more expensive and doesn't last as long. Okay. The ZK1s, I've had uh, better results. They aren't as heavy and they, they, they just last they longer. Less. They cost less. Yeah, I, it's just one of those things where I actually like the cheaper one more. Uh, I like the ZK1 much more. Uh, that's the only one that I actually recommend if you are going to use one. But a lot of these guys like the K7.3. I just don't. Hey, Amanda. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the difference between these. If you want a Siamese, I recommend using these. The VRT3s, uh, if you have employees, I recommend taking these caps off. I've had it in the past where my cleaning technicians would go out and for whatever reason, whenever they're taking a smoke break, they like to hang out next to the trailer and they'll just mess <laughs> around with the valve and all of a sudden you turn the machine on and machine won't start. Or as soon as I push down on the trigger gun, the machine dies. Well, that's because it's got five, it, it's trying to produce 5,000 PSI and whenever you release the trigger gun, the engine dies down. Well. You're also going to blow your belts when you do that. So I just recommend taking these lids off. Uh, the handle. I don't like these being on there. If you're an owner operator, great. You know not to mess with this. But if you have employees, get rid of this. Just throwing that out there. This is Marco with Washmart.com. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to show off this machine. Oh. Oh, hello. Y'all keep moving. <laughs> Y'all over there then. Yeah. Stuff back there for one? Well, we had all three warehouses, and then we were supposed to move in here in February. So I closed this one down in uh, February with the expectation that we were going to move here March first, and we didn't.